Hey guys, it's been a long time since we've made a video from Park K-Test, otherwise known as the front yard. But uh, I've got just a little bit of time, enough to answer a question that I get constantly about the DX Commanders, which is how long does it take to set them up? What am I getting into if I want to get into something like the Expedition model for Poda Soda Go to whatever? And my standard answer to this is it's well under 10 minutes if you've done it a couple of times and you know what you're doing. But there are a couple of things I've done to my setup to make it go, you know, just incrementally faster. So I'm gonna run through it here. I'm, uh, I'm all packed up with the backpack QRP setup. Got the KX2 and the DX Commander Expedition model here, uh, which frankly is the worst case scenario. The classic goes up a little faster. So let me dig this out and I'm gonna do it sort of in parts. I will time how long does it take me to get from my backpack setup to just a pile of parts because frankly that may not apply to you. How you're gonna pack and transport it may be different. So then we'll separately time how long does it go from pile of parts to working antenna. So that's the radials, that's the elements, that's the plates, that's the stakes. There's the battery. And a chair. All right, I got everything out of the backpack and just in a pile of parts here, which I think is sort of the fair starting point uh, for this is how long it takes to set up the antenna. Just as a quick reminder what we're getting into, we're gonna set up the pole, which as an aside, this is really the big difference between the Expedition and the classic DX Commander models. The Expedition comes with this handy dandy small two foot-ish collapsed pole. If you need that because you're putting it on a motorcycle or in a backpack or six other things <laughs> that I do that have no space, um, you really need the small pole and you should get the Expedition model. If you don't need that small collapsed pole size, get the classic. Uh, the pole is going to go up faster because it's in fewer sections and the pole is stronger and you'll have the option, maybe you don't need it portable, but you'll have the option of running more elements. So anyway, we got the pole, we got the driven and the ground plates, we've got uh, a guy line mast and a holder for the top of some of the elements, some stakes to hold it into the ground, radials, driven elements, and a little black tape. This is one of the secrets we'll talk about in a minute. So. I might have to move the camera around to get shots of what I'm doing, but I promise in the editing, I'll keep the timeline consistent. You'll see a clock down here in the bottom corner. Uh, that clock is gonna be real time. How long did it take uh, from the minute we said go till the thing's ready to go on the air? If you've never seen a DX Commander go up, it's a pretty simple process. It starts by attaching the ground and driven plates to the bottom of the pole, the ground plate being held on by the screw cap on the bottom of the pole. Then there are two plastic plates that go over the pole and sit at various places based on the taper. One is for the guy lines, and the other is just a guide for the elements going vertically, as well as where the hook goes for shorter elements. I take all of my elements up the pole at the same time. It saves up and back trips, which is just wasted time, except right there I had to come back and straighten out my 30 meter element just a little bit. I got ahead of myself here and I'm fooling with radials before I put the stakes in the ground, so knock another 10 seconds off the total time. These things are super easy to put up by yourself if you use two of the guy ropes sort of as helping hands. Pull against them and then you only have to fool with one rope by yourself. Radials are the last part. We're going to talk about these in more detail in a minute because this is where people think the time goes. Done. Okay, I won't know what the final time on that setup was until I get to editing and see how long this video clip is. But uh, I'm gonna guesstimate seven to eight minutes somewhere in that time range. Odds are I'm gonna have to speed up or time lapse the setup process to make it bearable in the video. So you can't really see the pace that I'm going. I would call it keep moving. I'm not running, I'm not hurrying, I'm not out of breath when I'm done. Uh, but I'm not dawdling either. I'm not standing there thinking about my next move. So this is, you're gonna have to have done it a couple of times, but three or four, not 30 or 40. 
Are there antennas that go up faster than this? Well, of course there are. There are antennas that literally have zero setup time. Your, your permanently installed mobile antenna is there and there's nothing to do except drive. So it's not the fastest antenna ever, but it's not a half hour project setting up one of these things. It's just minutes. And what you get for that is a full size quarter wave on a whole bunch of different bands. As set up here, I can run 40, 30, 20, and 15, the entire band with no tuner. I've got a full quarter wave on 40, 30, and 20, and a 5 8 wave on 15 meters. So this is a very efficient antenna with a great low takeoff angle that is going to get absolutely the most performance out of my little QRP rig over there. All right, I'm going to tear this thing down and I'm going to show you all the little sort of tips and tricks, things I did to this antenna to make the process so quick and easy for setting it up. But uh, of course, you know me, I got an antenna and a radio. I, I got to call somebody first. Okay, so she works. Let's take it down. Let's talk tips and tricks to make this thing as easy as humanly possible. Tips number one, two, and three all have to do with the radials. Um, I'm going to try and show you some close-ups here. We'll see what the autofocus does. Okay, here on the end of my radial bundle, you'll see I've got an alligator clip. This is a whole lot faster than fooling with the wing nuts and spade terminals on the ground plate. You wouldn't think it makes that much of a difference, but if you've got four, five, six of these bundles and it takes you 20 or 30 seconds to fool with that wing nut, especially trying to get the spade underneath the washer, there's a whole minute, both setup and maybe tear down. So every little bit helps. Here's the next thing on the radials. They all have this white stripe painted on them, each and every last one of them. That white stripe is just the right distance from the alligator clip to tell me where the stakes go. So I don't have to guess how far out from the pole my stake should go in, which means I don't have to adjust my ropes every time. So those are just little sort of neato things, but the important one is this, over, under, over, under. It's called the over-under coiling method. Picked it up from a bunch of roadies for some rock band somewhere. Anyway, the joy of the over-under coil method is that it lets you do this. Perfect, straight, every time, no knots, no tangles. It saves countless, <laughs> countless minutes, maybe hours of frustration dealing with getting your radials deployed. You undo the Velcro, toss, and your radials are out. And here's the reality. You don't have to fuss with them that much. I took 30 seconds and separated them out, put them kind of evenly around the, the antenna. But you don't really have to be that fussy about it. They don't all have to be in a perfect circle and a perfect straight line. They don't have to be any particular length. They sure as heck don't have to be resonant on 40 meters. Put some wire in a bundle, stick an alligator clip on it, throw it in each of the four clock directions, and you've got 90% of what you're gonna get out of radials. I'll try and find a better video to link to for this method, but the over under starts with this and makes a coil. You see how I've gone over top of the alligator clip side. For my next one, I'm gonna turn my hand around backwards, grab the wire and then flip it so that the tail, the tag end here is now underneath my loop. You would think that this is gonna make a big knot, but in fact, what it's doing, and the next one comes over normal forward, and then under again, and over and under. And once you get good at this, it's, it's really fast. But the point is you're taking the twist out of the wire, and twist is what makes knots. One other just little tiny thing that will help you out from a packing standpoint. Uh, when you do this, you're very likely to end up with the ends of the radials not anywhere near your Velcro strap. Take that 
and make a small loop out of it or one big one, whatever's the shortest road to hoe, as it were, and just make sure that you don't have loose ends of your radials loose in the bag. That's another good way to end up with kinks and twists and things that'll cause you problems down the road. You may or may not have noticed when I was putting the pole up, but you can use the guy ropes to your advantage when you're doing this by yourself. The one closest to you is the only one that you need to unhook to put it down or the last one you hook up to stand it up. I pulled the stake out of the ground because that's easier to do with the rope attached to it, but I'm still holding tension on this so that it doesn't go anywhere. But to set the pole down is no big deal. You just lean it over. You don't want to go too fast because you don't want to flack the top of it off the ground. The top is going to make contact first. But you don't have to do anything special. Just lean it over. It's not that heavy. Notice how leaving the other two guy ropes attached gives me something to pull against. Again, not that it's that heavy, but every little bit helps. I'm reasonably sure you could not see this when I was setting up. I abandoned, aka I lost, the aquarium tubing that Callum gives you to hold the 40 meter element on the top of the pole. It's a good system, but black electrical tape works just fine, and if you leave yourself a little tag end, it takes no time to get it on there or off. Same is true of the 30 meter element, and I made a uh, silver sharpie mark on the pole here at the, the highest I've ever gotten the 30 meter element, so I know when to quit pulling on the darn thing. Okay, on my way back down the pole, I'm going to stop here to unhook the 20 meter element, and I'm going to go ahead and pull the 30 and 40 through this top guideline while I'm here. Sometimes they get a little bit hung up if you're pulling them from all the way down at the bottom, and this just saves me a trip back up the pole. Okay, and here's one of the first actual little uh, bits of magic. I color-coded my elements with their Velcro strap and the points of the triangles for the driven plate as well as the guy plate and the top plate. Um, it doesn't really matter, and by the way, you'll notice I'm using the same over-under wrap technique for the elements. Even though I'm not going to throw them out, I still don't want them getting tangled. It doesn't really matter which spot on the DX Commander you put which element, but you don't really want to get them crisscrossed. If you start on this point for the 20 meter element, you want to stay on that point going up the pole. Having everything color coded means you don't have to think when you get to the next junction. And every time I have to think is when, usually when I make a mistake. Maybe this is obvious, but when you go to take the pole down, stand it back up. Let gravity help you. It also makes sure that the sections that you're collapsing are nice and straight. Prevents binding and, worst case, breakage. I put a little piece of foam in the top of the pole just to take up the extra space. Keeps the thing from rattling around all over the place when it's on the back of the bike. The guy plate I use as a winder for the guy ropes. I use the carabiners as a stop to keep the ropes from sliding off the end of the triangular point. And I always start so that the first one I wind, I tuck the loose end into the red hole. The second one I wind, I tuck the loose end into the yellow hole. And then the last one, I tuck the loose end into the green hole. That way when I go to unwind these, I don't ever accidentally unwind one that's on the bottom first. That makes a huge mess. Traffic light order, green, yellow, red, works every time. The last two little tidbits are right here on the bottom of the antenna. Uh, tidbit number one is this particular wing nut is just a little bit too big. It actually runs into the pole when you try to tighten it or loosen it. So take your Dremel tool or your grinding wheel or your file or whatever, find a rock, and rub the sides of this thing down. I don't know if you can tell that it's significantly smaller than the other wing nuts, but that frees it up so that it will spin nicely and makes attaching your main driven wire a whole lot simpler. The other thing that's down here are these elastic bands. This is what lets me get rid of the hose clamp that holds that driven plate down. These elastic bands are actually attached through the slits in the ground plate. So they hold the driven plate down in place under the tension of the elements without requiring the hose clamp, aka without requiring tools. Okay, folks, well, that's it. That's all I know about the DX Commander Expedition model and making it as quick and easy to set up and tear down as possible. Uh, I'll tell you, because I know somebody's going to ask, 
These bags are what are called stuff sacks. These happen to be outdoor products brand from Amazon. Not sponsored, I don't even have an affiliate link. Check them out or not, see if I care. Um, but they do a pretty good job of keeping all the bits and pieces separate and, and untangled. And I think, no evidence for this because I've never tried it the other way, but I think keeping the stuff packed neatly when you're transporting it from point A to point B goes a long way to making sure that your separate pieces are all still separate when you get there. Well, the wind's picking up, so we're gonna call that a wrap for today. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Mash some of the YouTube stuff while you're down there. It seems to make our Google overlords happy. And if you talk to Callum, tell him I said hi and thanks for the expedition model. It is a blast and it works like a dream. In the meantime, get yourself out in the field for a little portable work. Whether it's a DX commander, a wire in a tree, or two tin cans in a string, operating portable sure is a heck of a lot of fun.